I'm a girl who used to be struggling with my self-worth and just wanting to end it all. I wanted to hurt myself. I got really depressed and stayed in my room and starved myself since I have the mentality of not deserving to eat. But I do, and I'm holding back since I have people who love me. And I try really hard to be better, but it's hard. I try not to hurt myself, and I don't. I quit using my phone and try to hold myself, and I'm doing better. Luckily, the only thing stopping me is that people will be crying, and it will just be different if I'm gone. I realize that this is not the way to live. Also, if anybody else is struggling with depression, suicidal thoughts, starving, please, please, please seek help. This is not the way to live. Please, I beg you from a person with these to another. There is hope for you, and whatever you're going through, it will get better. I promise. I'm fortunate that I don't have a horrible story, but basically, right before COVID, I started getting really bad anxiety and depression, and it caused me to push away a lot of my friends. It got to the point that it affected my health in general. I started having horrible stomach problems, had multiple trips to the ER, and urgent care. Just to find out, I had IBS, and it was because of my mental health. Once we got back into school, I'm lucky to say that it got much better, same with my physical health. This may not seem like a big deal compared to what others have gone through, but it has happened across the globe, so I would like to share. During the pandemic, I became incredibly depressed, and at one point, I contemplated taking my own life. I know many people have gone through the exact same thing, but I want to say you won't feel like this forever. I felt as though I was drowning in this depression, and I could never get out of it, but I did. You are in full control of what's going on, and you can reach out and get help. And if you don't want to talk about it like I did, try medication. And if none of these options are for you, just know you won't feel like this forever. During COVID, I was not allowed to hang out and see my friends all the time. So I spent a lot of time on social media, and that took a toll on my mental health, because social media is an extremely toxic place. My anxiety got worse, and I developed an eating disorder. I've struggled with body image my whole life, and social media just made it worse. I'm doing better now, but with school starting again, all the work that they're giving us is really stressful. And after school activities, it's really hard to manage my time. I think that mental health is so important and not talked about enough. And I'm happy to see this because it lets others know that they don't know well. I've always struggled with anxiety, but my parents just thought it was normal. Growing up, I was a very sensitive kid. I would cry a lot because of small things and would take almost everything personally. My parents never really took it seriously because they thought it, I was overreacting and that I'd grow out of it eventually. But as soon as I got older, my emotions heightened and my anxiety increased. This started in seventh grade. In high school, it only got worse. Eventually, it reached a point where I really needed help. I became so emotionally dependent on other people because if I was by myself, I would be alone with my thoughts. I started dis distancing myself from people who I thought were against me, but in reality were only trying to help. I started becoming self-destructive, physically and emotionally. When I was breaking down in my mom's car, she told me she was going to take me to the police station, so I tried to jump out while it was moving. She pulled over just in time for me to get out on the sidewalk, and I ran off. Cops picked me up that night. I ran away two more times, and the last time I ran off, I genuinely planned to take my own life. A friend who picked me up and tried to comfort me as best as they could until the cops found me again and took me to the ER. I was there for a couple days, and then I was admitted to an inpatient facility. I remained there for more than three weeks and was able to recover, and I actually graduated the program a few days early. I'm doing a lot better because I went to that facility. I'm still processing that whole ordeal, particularly what I experienced at the inpatient place. It was a very isolating place, and I wouldn't exactly want to go back there but I am recovering at a steady pace now and I'm happy about where I'm at. I'm three months clean as of now. To those who are struggling right now, I will never know exactly what you are experiencing, but whatever you are doing to keep yourself safe and healthy, I am proud of you for that. It's hard, but I know you're doing your best. For the past three years, I've been struggling with my eating disorder. I've been in and out of treatment. Each time, no more success as the last. I felt like at the point of giving up. I felt like I kept getting so much worse every time. Bulimia is not very much talked about as I feel like the other way of an eating disorder is way more talked about and more people tend to struggle with it. Feeling like I, it wasn't a problem and I never admitted that what was going on was serious. I felt like not looking like I would struggle with it affected me the most. The cycles of up and ups and downs you feel, COVID definitely impacted my mental health more than I realized. Being trapped inside with my thoughts felt like a whirlpool of never ending emotions. As days go on, I am getting better and I'm finally able to realize that my ED doesn't define me as a person, doesn't define how much I care about others and how I represent myself. I can promise that I am trying my hardest for recovery 
and I'm happy today I found some supportive people and ways to cope with my feelings and emotions that drift that way. I struggle with anxiety. I have for a while now, but COVID made what seemed like normal or manageable anxiety become my whole world. During COVID, my family played it very safe, and when we started to loosen up our rules, the change was a hard adjustment for me. I countered the loosening of rules by enhancing the ways that I would stay safe. I did it so much that I couldn't focus, I couldn't sleep, it felt like I couldn't function like a normal person. I didn't know what was happening and I didn't know what to do. Life felt like it was on a pause because my COVID anxiety wasn't letting me enjoy the things in my life that I loved. I didn't feel like myself, but eventually I was able to get help from my family, friends, and my therapist. I was also put on medication to help. Slowly but surely, I started to feel more like myself and like my life could begin again. However, anxiety will affect me my whole life. It might go in waves, but it will always be there. I still am dealing with pretty severe anxiety about COVID as I speak, but I know it's getting better and that I hope for a world where I won't be as anxious. Whether that happens or not, I know that I have great people around me who will be there for support. Not really a story, but just something I wanted to add. Finding something, no matter how little or insignificant or stupid it may seem, helps. Maybe you don't like talking about things or it feels hard or wrong. That's fine. But getting something to help you vent is going to help you so much. And if you can't talk to those you are close to, or maybe you don't want to, try someone you aren't as close to. And if you're on the receiving end, just listen and try to do what makes them feel more at ease. And also, maybe don't dump all your problems or vent to somebody unless they are okay with it.